Hello Interwebs, welcome to Let's Fix Computers. Uh, I've got a HP 15 something or other. It's so HP, HP 15 BA054 uh, that is liquid damaged. Um, so customer came in complaining that it did not turn on and she was like, my laptop doesn't work. And I smelt it and I smelt wine. And I said, did you spill wine on it? And she said, yes, I did. And I'm like, right, okay, so that'll be why it doesn't work then. Anyway, uh, so um, uh, let's go ahead and take this thing apart. It's missing a couple of screws. I'm not sure if I've seen this one before or what, but either way, um, I'm not sure whether it turns on or not at the moment, but um, the first thing I'm going to do is open it up and just see if we've got any puddles inside. Um, because when you've got liquid damage, um, sometimes the only way to find out how extensive it is is just to turn it on and see what happens. However, at the, the, the very least, at the very least, you should open it up and make sure that it's not swimming in liquid first. Uh, you should at least take, you know, reasonable due steps uh, to ensure that it's dry before you attempt to turn it on. And this goes for any liquid damage device. So let's open it up and see what the deal is. Classic signs of liquid damage to the back of the DVD drive. It corrodes really, these, these DVD drives corrode really quickly when they're liquid damaged. I've seen it before. Sometimes they survive. Okay. I've seen this one before. I'm sure I've seen this one before. I'm sure it was liquid damage then as well. Doesn't matter. Either way, this thing is sodden inside and it's just, it's, my hand is getting sticky with residue and it's, uh, it's just horrid. It's horrid. Ah, okay, we've done an SSD conversion on this one. That's why I recognize it. I'm pretty certain this thing has been liquid damaged before and the last time I saw it we replaced the DVD well, uh, we fixed it back up and did an SSD conversion on it. Ugh, either way, I need to get some, some kitchen roll. Right, I'm just going to be using some uh, isopropanol to clean up where I can. So firstly Let's get that uh, SSD out and just see what condition it's in. Hopefully that hasn't been goosed. Right, we'll take out off these uh, side panels, these uh, brackets. Oof. What, what I'm gonna do is, now, testing SSDs is a bit of a dark art. To my knowledge, there's no real good test for an SSD in the same way that there is for um, uh, for a hard drive. You can't do a sector scan on these things because they don't have sectors. Um, so what I'm gonna do firstly is I'm just going to, I'm just gonna spritz this thing with isopropanol and just wipe the worst of the crap crud off of it. And then what I'll do is I'll plug it into my workstation and I'll just try doing, I'll make sure I can read the contents of it and I'll try transferring some data to and from it. I'll copy across, you know, it's like some big video files or something like that. And we'll just see if the, uh, the files copy over successfully. Because uh, if it can handle some large, whoops, if it can handle some nice big file transfers and it's pulling sensible speeds and stuff like that, I'm happy that this thing is okay. Because the thing about SSDs is generally speaking, when they fail, they fail catastrophically. It'll either work or it won't in my experience. Um, unlike hard drives, which are obviously incredibly intermittent when they're in a state of failure. Right, that connector is all nice and clean, so I think it's gonna be okay. Um, I could, I wonder, I could try and open this thing up. There's a screw there. Is there any screws hidden under the, yeah. Screw there, and possibly something there. Hmm. I wonder, I don't think anything will have penetrated inside that case. I don't think that's happened. I mean, the case is not like sealed or anything, but I don't think the wine would have gotten inside it. 
So I'm going to try plugging that in and see what happens. If the video cuts out now, it's because it crashed my PC when I plugged it in. Okay, right, so it's detected by my workstation. That's a good start. So I think the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to take a backup of this drive. Now, oh, that's me clearing some stuff. Yeah, I don't care, get rid of it. My backup drive was full, so I just did a quick purge of old backups. Anyway, as I was saying, the first thing I'm going to do is grab a backup of this drive while I have the opportunity, because you never know, the drive might be intermittent. And if I lose access to this drive, uh, I'm going to be kicking myself. So yeah, just get rid of all the things. I don't care. Fine, skip, go. I don't care. Delete it. Okay, as I was saying. So I'm going to go ahead and um, run Snapshot on this thing, which is the backup utility that I use. And we're going to grab all of the partitions on that Samsung SSD. Next. And we'll just pop this in HP 15 Samsung SSD. There we go. And save and start copy. And we'll just make sure that that actually gets going properly and gets up to a sensible speed. Now, this being an SSD onto my Western Digital Red over SATA, we should be pulling like, you know, at least 8,000 megabytes per minute. Oh yeah, there we go. So that quick burst transfer, let's wait for it to get to the big the main partition. Four, five, six. Yeah. 6,000, that's, yeah, okay, that's that's okay, I guess. The drive will be capable of much faster than this, you know, um, however, I am saving to a uh, mechanical hard drive, so it's not going to get the drive's full speed, but I don't know, that's not great. It might just have a lot of small stuff to do. Well, I'll let that, ca I'll let that crack on and we'll uh, carry on with this as soon as that backup is done. Ah, as soon as I hit stop recording just then, the speed started climbing up. So, oh no, the speed is climbing up anyway. Yeah, there we go, there is fine, it's fine. That's absolutely fine. Uh, I will still do a write test to this drive, but at the moment I'm happy that this SSD is still working just fine. So I don't think there's gonna be an issue there. Right, let's get back to the laptop while that runs. So let's head back over here. So the next thing we've got to do is um, I've got to go over a couple of sketchy looking areas with this. I'm just going to unplug. Uh, I'm sure I've seen this one before with liquid damage, but I can't remember. I'm sure this has happened before. Um, so uh, we're going to have to take this motherboard out to check that there's no nothing underneath it. And then once we've done that, I think we'll be in a position where we can risk powering it up. There's a few marks on top of the um, uh, RAM modules there. Just coming a bit closer. However, the RAM modules themselves seem to be clean. Oh, there's a couple. Oh, no, no, we've got some spots on that one. Yeah, okay, that's fine. We'll, uh, we'll give that a quick wipe down. Yeah, let's get this motherboard out so we can check the other side of it. And then, yeah, again, there's, there's just all marks up here as well. It's annoying me. I'm going to have to look up to see if I've seen this laptop before because I've got a nagging feeling that I've done a liquid damage cleanup on this exact laptop and a lot of these stains that we're seeing are historical stains from the last time this happened. So, um, and that being the case, I know that those stains are probably harmless and that's just from the previous time because, yeah, a lot of people, a lot of customers, they don't learn anything and I, I, have, I have seen... I've had laptops that have been in for liquid damage repair, two, three. I've had one laptop that's been in four times for liquid damage repair. And at that point, you know, you, you kind of, you don't want to not, you don't want to, you don't want to smack talk the customer, but you need to say to them, maybe you should stop having a drink on the same desk as your laptop, let alone next to it. Because clearly this, clearly you're, you are of a, uh, an absent minded nature, perhaps. But yeah, it is what it is. Okay. 
Right, well we've got, yeah, we've got some spots around there. That looks a bit sketchy. So, all right, we'll wipe all this down and we'll power it up and we'll see what it does. So let's start with the motherboard. So uh, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to spritz it with isopropanol just in the areas where I can see damage. And I'm just gonna very gently just toothbrush that clean. And then I'm gonna grab a paintbrush to quick dry that. And then some alcohol onto the toothbrush and I'm just gonna target a couple of the areas where it's still a bit sketchy. That screw hole has obviously been very wet. That's better. All right, and this area. Now I'm brushing with the toothbrush, but I'm not scrubbing. If you're not careful, the toothbrush will take components off the board. But, you know, you can apply a moderate pressure. And if something breaks off under just a very slight pressure, then it obviously wasn't on properly in the first place. So you've just got to be careful to watch what comes off. Although, to be honest, I haven't knocked anything off of a board in a very long time. It's happened to me before, but uh, not, in a very, whoops, not in a very long time. So I don't live in fear of that. I think the only time it ever actually happened to me when I knocked something off the board with a toothbrush, I was really asking for it. I was scrubbing and I was scrubbing on an area that was heavily corroded. And after it happened, I was like, to be honest, I don't know what I expected. All right, that's not pristine, but I think we've got the main concern off with that. And uh, I'm just gonna pop out that battery because that battery's just got a little bit of you know, schmutz in the corner. Make sure that he's okay. Which it is, that's fine. I'm gonna leave that out for a sec just to reset the BIOS for good measure. Just maximize our chances of this working first time. And I'm just gonna go over these areas here. The ports are obviously always a major entry point for liquid damage. And quick dry. And we'll go across these connectors as well. Okay, right, now for the main case, um, I'm going to use the gla uh, glass cleaner on this because where it's all plastic, I can use something that is a bit more aggressive. Not that glass cleaner is particularly aggressive, however, uh, obviously it's more water-based, so it's not electronics safe per se. I, you can use glass cleaner on electronics as long as you dry it properly, just alcohol is safer. Um, however, obviously, because we're on plastic, we use the glass cleaner now, the glass cleaner is a more effective cleaning agent, so it's better if you're able to use it. However, if you're on uh, if you're on electronics, alcohol is always better if you have it on hand. All right, and we'll just wipe that down with the kitchen towel. Now the kitchen towel, we won't be able to get into all the corners. I'm just gonna take the worst of it off. And then once uh, once again, I'll use the, uh, the paintbrush to get to all the other areas as a bit of a quick dry technique. There we go, and lastly I'm gonna give this a blow dry with the air compressor. Okay, right, let's stick our battery back in the motherboard and put just enough of this back together to try and start it. So, that goes in there. Right, trackpad I don't care about. Uh, USB from over there. Oh, that's got power lights on it and stuff. Yeah, we'll plug that back in. Put that in there. Uh, don't care about the DVD drive. And uh, 
We'll leave the keyboard off for now. We will need the keyboard almost immediately, but at least we can see if the thing powers on. Power cable, we need one of them. And we will plug in the display as well, just so we can get a post screen that confirms that everything works. And that'll do. Then we need memory as well. Just gonna give the memory module a quick brush. There we go. Okay, right, and I'll put a couple of screws into the motherboard just to hold that in place. There we go. Right, let's get a charger for this and see if we've got some power. Okay, we have a light on the charger. It's a good start. And power button. Okay, power button. Yep, we have a power light on the corner over here. And that's an initialized display, good. Okay, looks like this dude is gonna be just fine. Cool, uh, fine, let's, yeah, enter to confirm. Oh, no keyboard at the moment, that's fine. Okay, let's power off. Let's put the rest of it back together. So now, of course, the question that's on all your minds is would it have worked anyway if we hadn't cleaned it out? And the answer to that is probably, uh, in my opinion. However, um, even if it would have worked anyway, um, the, the stains and the wine spills that we found and we've just cleaned up, those may have turned into a problem in the future because it's not the initial spill that does the damage most of the time. What really kills these things is over time that liquid will just sit there and corrode away everything. Um, and that's why it's got to be cleaned up because it will work initially or the spill will happen, there'll be liquid there, it won't work. Then after say a day or an afternoon or an hour in the airing cupboard, it'll come back to life because the liquid is dried out mostly. But then after say a week, it'll then mysteriously just stop working again because the remaining moisture residue that was inside the device just sat there and ate away at all of the solder joints and all the connections and at all of these ribbon connectors and then just burnt those things up. And so that's why you still have to open it up and you still have to deal with the liquid spill, even if it works. I mean, obviously if it works, that's great. It means you're probably gonna have a working laptop again, but it still has to be dealt with. Okay, right. Do, 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 do. Let's put everything else back in. So wireless card in. Look at these piece of crap HPs with only one antenna. 2018, everyone uses wireless. Uh, fan, the fan is okay. Got a couple of marks on it, but nothing that's a cause for concern. Not sure exactly where those cables are supposed to travel to. I'll just see how things go back together. Then I might have to refer back to my footage to see exactly what was going on there. Oh yeah, there's this, oh yeah, the, the, the drive assembly. Let's clean this guy up. Ugh. So as you can see, this connect is in pretty bad shape. So we're gonna attack this with the isopropanol and the toothbrush and just see if we can bring that back. Should be okay, but you can see the corrosion forming already. And I am scrubbing now because uh, these contacts should be able to take that. And then finally, I'm just gonna get in there with my nail and just see if I can scrape off that layer of oxide. There it goes, there it goes. Got to be careful when using the nail because you will just take the trace clean off if you're too vicious here. So I've just taken off the layer of oxidization there and that trace is gone. That is gone. I'm not sure what to do about that. This, way, this cable is going to be a pain in the backside to get hold of. That is what the liquid damage does to the inside of your laptop. That's the problem. 
Okay, so I had a quick go at soldering that SATA cable and that was just horrendous and it was falling to bits in my hand. So I had a quick look on eBay and I found a replacement one for the princely sum of two pounds, two entire British pounds. So, uh, so yeah, we just bought that. That'll be here in a couple of days and then it can have a nice shiny new one. Well, it's not brand new, it's a refurb one, but you know, it's not gonna be liquid damage, which is the important thing. So in the meantime, I'm just gonna get the rest of this cleaned up. I'm not, gonna, I'm not too worried about getting all of this pristine. I just want to get anything that's going to rub off off of it. And then um, we'll get the rest of the laptop put back together. Um, and we'll just make sure that the keyboard and stuff works just in case I've got to order any other parts. And then other than that, I think this dude will be just fine. So even if, uh, even if it had been turning on, that uh, cable definitely needed to go. So because uh, I did also look at my uh, notes and I have done liquid damage repair on this laptop before. As I suspected the last time it was here was also liquid damage and I replaced a dead hard drive with an SSD. So yeah, it's, not, it's as I suspected, I have been through all this rigmarole on this laptop before. Right, we'll put that lot back in in a minute. I think we've got everything else hooked up now. So um, uh, let's just put in a couple more screws and then we'll check if the keyboard and stuff works. We'll boot it up off of a Windows 10 flash drive and then I can just go into a recovery environment and verify that the keyboard is okay. And uh, that pretty much wraps this one up after that, because uh, then I've just got to plug the SSD back in. And the SSD, by the way, it has finished doing its backup and there are no errors there. So I'm happy that there's nothing wrong with that dude either. So let's plug this in. We have got a little bit of marks on the keyboard up here. Just realized I'm still on upside down mode. Sorry about that. Um, so we might need to do a little bit more tidying up with the keyboard, but we'll see if it works first. So if the keyboard is also toast, that's going to be a pain in the backside. I really hope the keyboard works on this thing. Okay, there we go. So we are now booting from a flash drive. Wait for that to boot up and we'll check if we have trackpad, mouse buttons and a keyboard. Okay, we have a working trackpad. Left click works, and uh, let me see, let's go into repair this computer, troubleshoot and command prompt, okay, and yep, we have a right click, that is working, good, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, that's fine. TR. That's fine. And those buttons up in the corner where there was a bit of marks, that looks fine. Yeah, this keyboard is fine. If there was going to be any problems, we would have seen them by now. I'm happy with that. Good. All right, that's fine. So this thing just needs that replacement SATA cable and it'll be okay. So I'll see you guys in a day or two when that thing has shown up. Okay, right, here's our replacement widget thing. So let's get this hard drive back in the laptop. And then we're basically just reassembling now. Okay, so we've got our replacement widget for the hard drive, uh, SSD rather. Uh, so the SSD also backed up successfully, so I'm happy that there's no lasting damage to this guy although we'll give the laptop a good service once we've got it running anyway, just as a, a bit of a test run, a burning test. So now we've just got to put it all back together again. So let's get these screws in, and then I think we're about done. Okay, right, I'm just gonna do a loose fit with the back cover for now, and I'm just gonna start it up one more time and make sure that everything is still all right, just before we actually commit and put all the screws back in. So, power on, and also, I'm gonna get the battery connected as well, just to make sure that the battery isn't causing any problems. 
I've no reason to believe that it will because there was no problems in that area, but just in case. Okay, we've got a power light and we also have a charge light. So we'll just see if this thing actually boots into Windows, which it looks like it's going to. Yeah, no problems. There's nothing on it. However, it has booted. There we go. And I've also replaced the other missing screws that were not there. I'm not sure what the story behind that is. I mean, I as I mentioned, I have looked at this laptop before. However, I don't leave screws out because I have literal trays of spare screws. So even if I dropped a couple and lost a load, I would have just replaced them. So I wonder if someone else was uh, looking to have a hack at this before I did or something. But either way, no problem, all sorted now. So, the last item of business is just to clean the thing up. There's a few little bit more shiny areas here. The top of the laptop still reeks of wine, so we'll just sort that out. Right, and there we go, we're all done. So uh, the combination of the, um, the glass cleaner on the keyboard followed by multi-surface polish should help with the smell as well. I mean, obviously um, stuff like wine and uh, milk and that kind of thing, it gets into the laptop and it takes deep, deep cleaning to truly remove it, which uh, I certainly don't get paid enough to do. Um, however, the cleanup that we've done today uh, and then just going over it with the glass cleaner and the polish afterwards gets the worst of it off. So everything else is probably not gonna be noticeable and anything remaining will just fade anyway. We've also taken care of anywhere that looked corroded or corroding. There are still some marks left, like you saw on like the hard drive brackets, they still looked a bit sketchy, but that doesn't matter. That's not going to get any worse. That's just staining at that point. It's not actual active corrosion that's gonna carry on eating away at the metals. So. We've now made sure that this thing is absolutely fine. So uh, thank you very much for watching everyone. I will see you all next time. Goodbye for now.